coming together is a beginning keeping together is progress working together is success this is a beautiful quote which talks about the collaboration and if you look at the collaboration opportunities that are happening in the market in the business they are humongous and what it is like post covid collaboration and can we raise together to grow together hello hi there welcome to the guiding voice podcast series the guiding voice for a better future this podcast is to help professional students it employees and entrepreneurs to shape their careers dear listeners in every episode we interact with industry experts or leaders or coaches or academicians across the globe to drive some insightful conversations that will help each one of you learn great things also we share an interesting trivia or a fun fact about the it world or technology towards the end thank you for tuning in this is your host navin samala and with my co-host sudhakar nagalla today we are going to discuss a topic raising together in post covid corporate journeys and we are pleased to welcome sabya sachi to our show currently sabya sachi datta is heading the indian operation of a scotland headquartered company vidatech armed with wide experience in various leadership roles spanning more than two decades sabya sachi has successfully led diverse indian and global organizations multi million dollar businesses in the past synonym to his name sabya sachi is extremely adept in both big size multinational companies and startups at the same level in fact he led two global companies entry into india and turning around ailing business he is his key forte a national merit scholar sabya sachi is bachelor in engineering and mba and has been honored as a distinguished alumni of his institute a doer and challenge seeker he is adept in people management skills and a die hard optimist sabya sachi successfully made a name for himself in multiple industries that he has worked before a much sought after guest lecturer he cherishes interacting with the younger generation and sharing his thoughts he is also a mentor and has helped many under severe depression travels difficult times both in corporate and social milieu sabhi sachi thanks for taking time welcome to our show pleasure so nice of you for those kind words i am deeply honored before proceeding navin and sudhakar what i would like to just put across a small caveat or a kind of a disclaimer that whatever i'm going to talk about are strictly going to be my personal views and not that of my current or previous employers at all so with that i'm i'm happy to be at your platform and hope i will be able to share some thoughts and insights for every audience of yours across the strata thank you thank you sabhi sachi thanks for the disclaimer i think that is the disclaimer that is valid for all our guests in uh, our platform because we are only looking at the experience of the guest not necessarily representing any company's uh, position on any topic that we talk okay. about okay so sabhi sachi can we get started sure I, i'm ready shoot sure so can we talk about the need of rising together in this post covid corporate scenarios why do we need to so that's a, uh, that's a very kind of a broad statement that uh, i believe that we need to look across the table and when you see across the globe everybody some way or the other has been impacted uh, due to covid there have been job losses friends or relatives passing away there's a lot of mental stress and trauma completely shutting down in sectors like hospitality or travel and tourism industry and th- these have been quite rampant i'm not focusing on any particular region or a country or a sector and uh, what i see is that uh, those who have survived and come out strong longer it is imperative that uh, they start to cooperate and co-opt with each other instead of considering every other person or entity as a competitor as it used to be earlier so a company or a, or a person when he sees somebody within the sector he should not think of them as their sole competitor or a kind of a person who needs to be kind of a beaten and we need to excel that's fine but after this uh, covid scenario it's better that we co-opt with each other and that's what i mean when i say we need to rise to together i'll just give you a couple of examples uh, just as the pandemic was setting in uh, almost a year ago we heard and we saw and we noticed basically that two giant global competitors 
like GSK and Sanofi, they are both huge computers in the pharma sector. They announced a kind of a tie-up or a partnership to develop a potential vaccine. And everybody was putting in their resources, their manpower, their intellectual capabilities, just so that we all rise and help the human beings all across the world. And that has been a kind of noticed and understood by everybody. Now, what I see is that post-COVID world is assumed to be drastically different than pre-COVID time. And we, we are all witnessing that and we are all going through that in that sense. What used to be normal then is not going to be kind of a, a very kosher or a kind of a scenario which it used to be like before COVID. So post-COVID scenario is, is drastically different than pre-COVID scenario. And that's what I mean that in that scenario, it's better that we rise together hand in hand and we face the situations uh, in, in, in a manner that uh, we could tackle it uh, in a very, I would say, resounding manner. That's what uh, I mean when I say that we need to rise together. Excellent points. Co-opt and cooperate. And yeah. also, you talked about uh, Sanofi and GSK collaborating together. So at a broad level, Sabya Sachi, how can corporations collaborate to rise together? You picked one example. Any yeah. other scenarios? Uh, there could be many, Sudhakar. There, there could be many ways uh, in which companies can work together in unison, not just to survive the difficult time we are in, but in fact grow also. I'll give you a few examples as you asked for. I would say uh, one could be like uh, we share resources. Now, what do you mean by share resources? I'll give you an example uh, that we noticed uh, that happened in Germany. A grocery chain called Aldi and a QSR chain, McDonald's, that's pretty well known. They started sharing their staff. A kind of a talent exchange happened. I'll just give you a, a, a background to the story what happened. As the lockdown set in, there were a lot of layoffs, particularly in the QSR segment. Those were the ones that were shut down almost at the overnight. Overnight, uh, those chains were sub shut down. And what do we do with the people over there? They were trained staff. They are valuable staff. What the scenario happened was that McDonald's was kind of uh, were having staff in excess, ready staff. Whereas on the other hand, there was a rush for grocery items people were trying to procure and buy in huge quantity. And there was a rush at the out LD outlets. So what they did, what LD tried is that they absorbed the staff which were in excess at McDonald's and they recruited them on temporary basis. That's what I mean when they started sharing resources. And this was with an option that once the normalcy returns, the staff could come back to McDonald's if they want to, or they could continue working with LD. And in that way, LD could tackle the scenario, the, the immediate urgency was met with the excess staff, which was kind of lying unutilized at McDonald's. And they got recruited and that their jobs were secured when they started working in LD. That's one example what I mean when they started working together. That's how you shared resources. The other could be like sharing intellectual property rights. You know, uh, Covishield is uh, that uh, prominent uh, vaccine that we are using in India is basically AstraZeneca and Oxford product. And this has been kind of uh, shared with uh, Serum Institute in India. Uh, and they are manufacturing borrowed intellectual rights of uh, AstraZeneca and Oxford. And they are producing in India and being used for everybody for that matter. In fact, I would say AstraZeneca is working with 15 other, in 15 other countries with 20 other partners and they are sharing their intellectual property rights. Again, an example where they are working, where people are working together hand in hand. I would say one more example that comes to my mind at this moment is when this uh, COVID situation became very rampant and one of the uh, one, of the, one of the ways or means to come out of it was suggested that you should use ample amount of hand, hand sanitizers. So there was a sudden need of getting hand sanitizers production ramped up and that was not going to happen overnight. So what happened was tied up with Carlsberg to meet the demand and there was a huge surge in demand of hand sanitizers at that time and that collaboration between these two extremely diverse companies from two different sectors helped in meeting the demand at that time so uh, these are the type of examples that uh, that showed the or that exhibited the fighting spirit we humans have developed over thousands of years to survive and come out of catastrophic situations so these are uh, the the thoughts or examples that uh, you asked for that comes to my mind immediately how we have taken or uh, handled this situation heads on. These are all some real great examples and uh, truly energizing to see the collaboration across different competitors and across companies from cross domains and all. And really interested to understand your view about what do you anticipate about industry in the near future overall? Uh, that's a tough one, uh, Naveen. But very interesting. At the same time, it's a very interesting question. It's difficult to anticipate. I don't have a crystal ball to gaze at. Had I got one, it might have been easier to answer that question. But speaking seriously, I would say one thing that's absolutely clear is that the business environment across the world has drastically changed due to COVID. And uh, based on my interactions with uh, different corporate leaders across sectors, at this moment, what I see is that the long-term vision, the corporate strategies, they have been kept in abeyance for some time. 
uh, by most of the companies that I'm talking to or I have been interacting with. And at this moment, there are people are thinking of coming out of COVID impact with minimum bruises and as quickly as possible. So what I see is that the horizon has been narrowed down and uh, people are at this moment uh, more focused or talking more just about how to how to how to fathom the next six to eight months, how how the world is going to shape up. That's what people are um, at, at this moment they are they are they are putting their resources and their and their focus on. So uh, leaders are deliberately many of them, uh, including my company for that matter, deliberately not uh, looking at very far ahead at this moment. And uh, not just our company, but many others have also tweaked their uh, strategies to align with the prevailing turmoil. So that that that's one thing that I am seeing happening, and that's what I am anticipating. That people at this moment are narrowly focused at a near 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 future, not at far future. Another another noticeable factor that I have seen is that companies across the world are now more interested in going digital. Uh, that's part physical, part digital models. So they are using just not the physical uh, way of uh, doing business, but also moving into digital space pretty fast. And uh, that, that, that's what is happening uh, across sectors, I would say, be it uh, your supply chain side or your or your deliveries. Uh, that's how people are kind of incorporating part physical, part digital models to serve to their or serve or address to their customers' requirements. Uh, there are some, certain sectors, I would say, uh, like the healthcare or the education sectors, which have uh, kind of really bloomed or I would say they have found their sweet spots even amidst this pandemic. These are the two sectors that has shown huge growth uh, during last I would say complete one year. Uh, many others in other sectors I would say even if you are reporting a flat uh, numbers, revenue numbers for that matter, that's not being considered uh, bad at all. And in fact, that's been applauded and people are considering or people are saying that's good enough uh, looking at the prevailing situation. So in nutshell, I can say at this moment, I would say uh, look without looking at the crystal, crystal ball is to hang on. Don't panic. Uh, these are tough times and soon we'll overcome it and emerge out stronger. And uh, better days, as they say, are surely ahead of us. The, the worst of uh, pandemic, I hope, is over by now. And uh, here onwards, it's only going to be kind of a upwards up uh, growth uh, growth stretch that's going to come and uh, for most of the industries across the, across the world. That's what I can think of at this moment. I think these are some powerful insights and I can relate to some of the aspects that you have mentioned about focusing on the short term aspects rather than planning too long term. And everybody started embracing this uh, digital space and that coined a new term altogether, making it digital. Right. Right, absolutely makes sense. And slightly changing the gears and talking a little bit about your experience in terms of helping the startups and ailing businesses, like you have turned them around. So can you share some of those insights around how you have turned around the ailing businesses so that they are back into action with full swing? That's, I would say, two questions merged into one. I'll take one after the other. Yep. So first, let me answer the startups. I have let two different companies uh, enter India. These are these are global companies um, who are planning to enter India. And I let them as a country manager and uh, successfully uh, made a mark for them. Startups, as you uh, probably everybody knows, can be very chaotic at times. And uh, that, that's quite expected. Uh, there's nothing uh, kind of a, a kind of a shock when you join a startup. So uh, you when you join a startup, you expect uh, the situation could be quite chaotic. Reason being there's no system, there's no steam, there's no structure. And that's why things can be very frustrating. But what What's required is that you need to maintain your balance, uh, a kind of a calm demeanor so that you handle the situation, the demands that, that could come up uh, at any moment, uh, day and night. So most of the time you have to be hands on. You cannot be kind of uh, dictating orders or, or expecting somebody else to do the job for you. You have to dirty your hands, so to say. And what I have noticed in, in startups, uh, multitasking is not a fancy word, but it's mandatory demand. You have to have a, a kind of a skills if you are sales a pure sales guy then uh, the operational aspect could be a shock for you or the or the finance or looking at the financial numbers or understanding the financial papers could be difficult for you but but in a startup you have to have this kind of skills all kind of uh, molded in in your personality so that's what is pretty mandatory in, in a startup so one positive aspect of working or i would say the element that uh, makes you go kind of uh, ecstatic uh, when you join a startup is uh, as it starts taking shape and it grows from almost nothing to an established company that's a fantastic feeling it's like your baby growing every day and initially it's struggling to take even baby steps stumbling and falling and then rising again and then one fine morning you see your baby is grown up and running that's an awesome feeling that's what you get when you when, when you work in a startup and the passion uh, the enthusiasm that you put in and once it starts taking the shape 
that's beyond words it's ex- explaining those kind of exp- feeling is really something that you only need to go through and enjoy that so that's what uh, startups are all about and i have enjoyed uh, working in startups as much as working in established companies one example i'll give you of uh, the turnaround experience that i have i have uh, i've helped one company with uh, in one of my previous assignments uh, the vertical i was heading wasn't doing good so it uh, in fact uh, it was bleeding and uh, there were different kinds of uh, thoughts within the management what do we need to do with that with that division and when i took charge of that division i had a pretty decent discussion with the top management and everybody believed that uh, although we are doing badly in that sec- under that vertical uh, but everybody believed that it could be turned around just simply because the competitors of ours were doing very good except us so what's the reason it's not that the market have shrunk or there's no demand for the product it's just that we were not doing good so when i took charge uh, you know what i did i was uh, kind of i looked at the portfolio i eliminated few i added a few basically rejigging the whole portfolio you know, i introduced new products which were there in our portfolio but not introduced for my division for my my vertical um, uh, variants of those uh, products were also introduced i changed the personnel there were few key personnel who i felt were not up to the mark they were not passionate enough or there was some kind of a lethargy in them so i changed personnel i also invigorated the distribution channel products were meant to reach the customers through distribution channel and the distributors were not very happy so so i introduced a lot of incentive schemes uh, i entered into the territories which were ignored by my predecessor i took a chance it's a kind of a risk that i took that uh, are we spreading ourselves too thin or do we need to enter those territories so these are uh, a few strategies basically i would say copy book strategies what what we read in management books and management journals i try to impl- uh, kind of import those strategies those thoughts in a very very simplistic manner uh, for my division and uh, and that started uh, yielding result and with a vision span of uh, i would say Two to three years from a struggler that we were, we became a market leader. So that that's an experience that I totally enjoyed turning around a business, and it it was it was real fun. As as you see the business growing, you are no more considered a laggard in the industry. People are respecting you now. So that's again a different kind of feeling, drastically different than what I felt uh, when I led startups. So these are um, kind of a few stories of mine which I thought of sharing with you. Excellent. Really appreciate. the open and candid conversation on that and accepting that we are actually lagging and we need to step up from where we are i think that is the first step to any success right because then you are baselining yourself to what is the current situation exactly yeah. and i really like the examples that you picked on the startup the mindset that you need to have like maintain the balance uh, yeah. be ready to dirty your hands and you know multitasking is something that is given hygiene aspect and it is yeah. not something that you would consider as a premium amazing yeah. thoughts there sabisachi so sabisachi you know through the guiding voice you know we are trying to share the experiences of the industry leaders to guide and mentor the students and young professionals so that you know they get influenced positively to shape their career so in that component can you please highlight some of your mentoring experiences where you had to focus on one or two key things that are more at broad strokes that will help others to look up to those things and focus on them That's a nice one. I would say good question, uh, Sudhakar. I enjoy mentoring. Uh, let me give you a big bit of uh, background before I answer that question of yours. You know, when I started my career, uh, my professional career for that matter, I often yearned for guidance and mentors. As I faced so many dilemmas or felt stranded at crossroads, I was so naive at times. Uh, like, uh, what do I do? Uh, I have no idea which one should be the right answer or right situation tackling uh, expertise. Or what do I need to do uh, when uh, there are two choices given to you? both look attractive but you don't know which one is going to yield the better result in the long run so that's when you felt that uh, had there been a mentor around me a person who could guide me properly uh, would have helped me so that's where uh, that's how the thought came and it stayed with me since then as i grew and over the over this last 20 years as i have grown professionally i have been extending helping hands and basically these are pro bono i don't charge anything for that matter to anybody who thinks of reaching out to me i don't advertise these things i don't kind of uh, publish size but uh, within my network or you know within I love interacting with the uh, young young generation young guys and there have been so many people uh, who have reached out to me basically I want to uh, kind of pass on the knowledge is that 
don't make the same mistakes that others did including me for that matter so the mistakes that i have done you should not repeat basically there's no need to reinvent the wheel as they say uh, learn from others mistakes or other success stories see what they did how well they did and uh, if i am in such a situation or if I, i need to do a similar kind of an exercise repeat in my professional career should i should i borrow that uh, kind of a story from him and try to kind of a tweak it and implement in my case in my scenario maybe why not uh, because this is how others have succeeded and you can you can learn from their uh, success stories so that's that's what i try to pass on to younger generation and by the way i'm also a master mentor uh, with a bangalore based organization called master connects professionally and personally i have tried my best uh, to extend this helping hands whenever possible day and night so talking of uh, mentorship uh, one case that stands out is uh, just about a couple of years ago i helped a young person who was suffering from severe depression and was on the verge of uh, even ending life and i helped that person to come out of it successfully thanks to almighty that person is now doing fantastic I, and i don't take credit for that what i try to do with that person is i showed the positive side of life uh, at times it it so happens that you are surrounded with negative thoughts and everything looks gloomy so what you need at those uh, very sensitive moments is somebody to show you the positive aspect of life life is precious so what i did is i just tried to kind of bring in positive thoughts and said this is a kind of a situation which is not going to last long so be tough the tough times uh, don't last long but the tough people do this is a success story which i cherish very dearly and it's pretty close to my heart that uh, a very in a very small and minor way i helped somebody and he, uh, that person is a successful person today so that's what i have done professionally and personally trying to help out to people as best as possible uh, during my spare time and that's that's what uh, has uh, given me immense joy as well at times sabhi sachi so excited and so positive to see that story the story that you shared is really amazing and you actually touched right chords i would say because the reason why we started the guiding voice is exactly the reason 20 years back when we started our career our span of control or the visibility itself was such that you know you had to depend on your peer group in the org- same organization your managers you know little senior gen- general managers or board of directors or plant or site in charge or you know up to that level mm-hmm. unfortunately at that point of time we did not have this much high speed internet also or youtube actually came into existence only in 2007 8 whatever it is time right. in, even when we were desperately looking for some outside in perspective at least those who joined in 90s like you and i we will be able to appreciate the depth of uh, that opportunities at that point of time even now i would say the current generation are so lucky that they are actually having the right resources available at their fingertip at you know 4g 5g you talked about mobile phone however even now i think there is you know such requirement is ex- in existence even today because in internet you go to internet everything is available but you should know what you are looking for if you have a question then finding an answer is easy but if you don't even have the defined question then it becomes really tricky and i really liked that expression but uh, it's so surprising that you actually quoted it don't make the mistakes that we already did there are numerous millions of other fresh mistakes that you can you know do and learn rather than repeating uh, the same things that we did you don't need to reinvent the wheel absolutely it actually resonates well with the philosophy of this guiding voice that actually is in existence for last uh, 13 14 months so amazing you actually brought me to little nostalgic feeling so talking about those early or late 90s about your early career experiences what are couple of things that you learned so early in your career sabesachi that are helping you even today which are relevant for your current role I would say there's no substitute to hard work there's no substitute absolutely no substitute trickery won't help you succeed in the long run so if somebody is kind of uh, telling you that there's a shortcut to success then that's baloney i would say that, that, that there's no value to that so perseverance eventually pays so hard work and uh, i would say your perseverance these are going to help you in the long run uh, because believe me career is going to be a long marathon what i believe 30 35 years of career uh, 
is is basically a marathon you're not running a sprint that uh, i play some trickery and uh, i succeed and become a ceo tomorrow then if you you may be gone then if you get caught so there's no substitute to hard work that's point number one i believe in real life situations that i would say are the best teacher that no book can predict or teach you in advance so the bookish knowledge the, or the theories or case studies that we read or learn while doing our, our graduation post graduation is fine to some extent when you step out uh, uh, onto the streets uh, the real life situation those are the situations that's going to teach you the best so uh, being hands on as i as i talked about uh, when i work, started working in startups i learned the value of being hands on so what i also believe in that you need to learn on the job and uh, times uh, so that i believe helps you immensely in your uh, leadership skills and decision making abilities so uh, the moment you step out and uh, start taking our start handling the situation as you face them your leadership skills naturally get a kind of uh, burnished and it comes out of your what do you say hidden personality into forefront so that's what i believe in uh, it could be a good uh, thought process the other one i would say is that uh, don't say no to any assignment uh, when you're starting your career at times what i have seen is the freshers uh, kind of uh, look at their kras and think of why i'm being asked to do this or uh, this should not be kind of uh, my calling Uh, this should be done by somebody else no don't don't, don't think uh, of looking at assignments from that point of view the early stage when you are uh, at your career is the time when you need to add as many facets as possible because uh, down the line as you grow you don't know which skill of yours is going to come handy and help you so why why don't you add on to your uh, arsenal uh, as best as possible with these skills or with these assignments that may look beyond your career everything is going to some way or the other i believe could pay you down the line so these are few things uh, so that i believe people should uh, look at when they are starting their career and which has uh, particularly if you ask me personally this has helped me a lot and uh, i believe that this could be a kind of a thought that others could also follow and learn from simply mind blowing and you know i'm just thinking like we could have met uh, about 18 19 years ago and i would have been in a much better position by now with the kind of uh, tips that you have shared fabulous thank you so the subsachi this has been a amazing conversation so far and let's try to know the personal side of you by asking a few interesting rapid fire questions are you okay with that okay okay probably you can answer in one word or two words as crisply as possible and to begin with the first bullet comes out what are your pet peeves oh pet peeves i have seen people use excessive jargons in corporate conversations and that's what uh, is one pet peeve of mine i don't believe in jargons just to add heft they think that if i'm using excessive jargons in my conversation people will look at uh, me in, in, with awe so that's not so that's not so so forget that so come out of that that's one pet peeve of, that i i don't like too much uh, in people's conversation the other is uh, hypocrisy and double faced people i don't like them at all great here comes my favorite question actually out of the inventory that we maintain what is your favorite failure oh favorite failure i have uh, in, in in my like like uh, 20 years of professional career i have had a lot of failures one i would uh, mention over here is uh, in one of my previous assignment i uh, for that matter my business narrowly missed a tender it, it was a it was a defense tender do i put in lot of efforts personally speaking and i i tried my best to grab that business uh, but we missed it and i was really disheartened but it turned out to be a blessing in this guys as um, the company later discontinued the product altogether so had we won the tender it might have would have been difficult to deliver the item but um, anyway we we missed the business and in in hindsight we see uh, that's a good failure that's a good one in fact the things happen for a reason and this is a great example yeah So now let's get to know the naughty side of Sabya Sachi. So what was your childhood mischief that you still remember? Oh. <laughs> well, I used to enjoy flying kites. I don't know these days. Uh, I don't know whether kids uh, enjoy flying kites or not. But I, when I was kids, like seven, eight year old, I used to enjoy flying kites. And often this uh, this, this exercise would stretch to late evenings, uh, and uh, sun would set, and then. moonlight is there and still i am flying my kite and at times it so used to happen that i used to get lost my fly, uh, kite and everything will go uh, the, uh, almost uh, non retrievable it, it's gone down 
and then coming back to my parents and asking for money again for tomorrow's kite and thread that used to be quite funny and quite mischievous that so many times my parents used to admonish me and say that uh, why don't you wrap up uh, this flying kite when the sun sets why did you, why do you need to continue that but uh, i will not change uh, that that's what my status used to be and uh, i spent <laughs> quite a huge amount of money so to say those days of my parents uh, just for buying kites and threads uh, so that used to be quite mischievous uh, i would say during my childhood <laughs> growing up growing up days yeah very funny experience i'll ask a different one what was your dream job uh, my dream job is yet to come i would say I have changed quite a few number of companies I have reached uh, so to say career pinnacle but I still believe uh, there could be something or some kind of a job I have not done till date so that's still a work in progress I would say interesting and the last one for the rapid fire and Satya Sachi what is the guilty pleasure that you enjoy the most I enjoy watching football and at times it's uh, this precious late night and just for that uh, I sacrifice my sleep hours it's basically because I I love football football is my passion but of late I'm seeing that uh, just to satisfy this pleasure of mine I am losing these sleep hours and that's hampering my health so in a way I would say watching late night football Okay great thank you for being so sport in the rapid fire run and over to Sudhakar Thank you after that amazing rapid fire session so from my side sabhi sachi the final question for this session mm-hmm. you know you talked about ensure that there is no shortcut to hard work be open for challenges don't draw lines on your responsibilities and your job description especially in the early part of your professional career identify a good mentor don't repeat the mistakes that are already done and what not but what is your one piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers like you uh sudhakar i would say it's difficult to give one piece of advice i'll give you quite a few that i love to share with the younger generation uh, young friends of mine uh, first thing i would say have passion in whatever you do don't do something for which uh, there's no support from your heart so you need to have the passion in whatever you are being assigned to you are planning to do that's one i would also say that never compromise on integrity that's very important because the moment you tarnish your name game is over so to say so don't compromise on integrity for that matter whether it's a it's a temptation or that's difficult to overcome but maintain your sanity and don't compromise on integrity i would also say that uh, don't hanker or don't chase money uh, money is not everything there would always be something that money can never buy so keep that in mind i would also say uh, run your own race and finally i would say be grateful always and never lose your humility so be thankful be grateful uh, for whatever god has given you or whatever is happening to you and never lose your humility your humbleness is going to pay you in the long run always believe me so these are kind of a few thoughts that i always share with younger generation so i'm sorry sudhakar i could not give you one answer uh, but i had uh, these uh, five six different thoughts that just came to my mind absolutely sabhish tachi the more the merrier they say so we asked it for one and i got five or six amazing ones so thank you so much for joining us today it was great to have this conversation with you primarily on rising together in this post covid corporate journeys but overall at the life at large really appreciate you taking time thank you so much thank you sudhakar thank you navin for having me on your platform it was really nice interacting with both of you it was i i really enjoyed uh, sharing my thoughts and, uh, and wish you all success uh, in your future uh, down the line episodes and or the entire platform for that matter thank you so much and the pleasure is ours hosting you sabhi sachi have a fantastic day thank you thank you and folks if you have liked this episode share with at least three of your friends or colleagues for whom you care for because the guiding voice podcast series is a purely not for profit venture and our team puts in a lot of effort to bring the best conversations to all our listeners and our purpose is very clear we want to provide curated guidance to all the professional students out there be it from engineering b schools and all the it employees and entrepreneurs so that all of you can make informed decisions based on the insights that are driven by the industry experts coaches leaders or academicians across the globe because if you share this with your friends it helps them also learn great insights from every episode or if you are listening to the guiding voice podcast on the apple podcast please do not forget to leave a review and a five star rating because every rating will help us expand our reach and contribute to our mission to shape the careers and lives of millions of people across the globe and if you are watching the episode on youtube 
please do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and last but not the least i want to reiterate please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues thank you so much in advance all right so it brings us to the trivia segment of today's episode and folks today's trivia is about the second largest search engine you know what is the second largest search engine in fact we have mentioned about it in previous episodes it's the youtube so today this question is about youtube do you know how many viewers are there outside the united states for the youtube platform take a guess but let me reveal the answer it's about more than 80% of the views for youtube come from outside the united states that's humongous and interesting isn't it thank you for listening there is more in store folks stay tuned take care be safe until next time bye bye and we are signing off for today see you in the next episode